everyone welcome to today's interactive workshop this is an interactive workshop which is when i ask the questions and then you guys help me with the responses so you would answer the arguments the most common arguments that non-vegans bring up during outreach and i will ask the question you will help me with the responses if you haven't done one of these stick around because it's a lot of fun Usually we do have non-vegans joining us as well on Instagram and then we'll use their arguments. What if someone says, so imagine you're at the cube, they're watching the footage. Yeah, they say, yeah, it's horrible. I don't like that the animals are treated this way. And then it gets to the point where you're holding them accountable and you say, well, if you don't agree with this, you're the one paying for it. And then they say, no, I'm not. The animals that I eat are already dead. What do you say to that? The animal is obviously already dead, chopped up and packaged because there is a demand for it. Every time you go and buy a dead body or body parts or what comes out of an animal's body like dairy products, every time you buy that one product, you're creating demand for it. Of course, the products are ready on the shelf for you. Like they're already there so that you can go and pick it up. But every time you walk away, they have to replace that. So every time you buy these products, you're paying for that company to pay a slaughterhouse worker to kill an animal on your behalf. It's pretty straightforward and that's how supply and demand works. Exactly what Laura said, you can also say, if you hire someone, a hitman to kill someone for you, you didn't do the killing with your own hands, but you're still responsible for it. And that's exactly the same. The only difference is obviously you pay them upfront. Um, but every time you go to the supermarket and you buy an animal product, that's exactly what you're doing. You're paying someone else to do the dirty work for you. So that's basically the response. Pretty easy and straightforward. Okay. I'll use this question. If someone said to you that their body couldn't process any vitamin or mineral, any nutrients that they were supplementing, and they said that they could only get it from an animal source, how do you respond to that? It's a myth, it's an excuse for not trying very hard. I would say not even very hard, it's just an excuse for not trying, because you don't have to try hard. We know that. I love this one. Even if you can't get all your vitamins, does it justify a holocaust? Beautiful. Where do you think these animals got their nutrients? Also, if you really don't want to be an animal abuser, you'll find a way. You know what I really appreciate? That a lot of your responses not only have the actual direct response to the question or claim or statement, but you always bring it back to the animals and you say something like, there's no excuse for animal exploitation. That doesn't justify killing animals. Whatever you guys have been saying, I really appreciate seeing that because that's exactly what we need to do. Not only handle the objection, but always, always, always bring it back to the animal. So if someone says, I try to be vegan or I really want to, but my body doesn't process the B12 supplement or, or the iron supplement, and that's why I eat just a little bit of animal products every week just so I can get that. Exactly what many of you said, the first thing would be, where do you think the animals that you eat get their nutrients and vitamins from? Let them think, use their brain, give them some space. And then the other bit of information you can give them is, specifically with B12, we know that this is happening. The majority of the B12 supplements are actually sold to animal agriculture. So they're directly being sold to these places so that they can inject the animals with B12. I would give them this information and then I would say, wouldn't it be better to directly go to the pharmacy and get that B12? B12 injection or tablet or spray, whatever it might be, just get it directly instead of going through an animal and filtering those nutrients or vitamins through their flesh. Doesn't it make more sense to just go directly to the pharmacy and get that instead? That's another thing you can say. And then usually people say that my doctor said 
because they want to sound more legit. So they say, my doctor said that I needed to eat a little bit of fish for this and a little bit of milk for that and a little bit of egg for that. So they will always try to back it up by saying, my doctor said so. And it's good to remind them that doctors, like general practitioners, they don't get that much education on nutrition and diet. So they're not the best people to consult when it comes to your diet. Sure, if you have a cold, you go to see your doctor and you listen to what they have to say. But when it comes to your diet, it's better to do your own research, your own independent research. Because another thing is, even with dietitians, um, they are studying at universities that are funded by the government and they are funded by these big industries, the pharmaceutical industries and animal agriculture and all of these. So the information that is being passed on to these doctors is actually biased. So it's way better to do your own independent research or find a plant-based doctor, a plant-based nutritionist, a plant-based dietitian to go and talk to. So that's another thing you can recommend. And you can tell them how all of this information that is found on online or we've always heard on the news, in ads, etc. There is a reason why these things have been taught to us and the reason is because everyone's making money off it, the government and those big industries. And that's why they want us to continue to believe that you need cow's milk for calcium or you need animal flesh for protein and iron. They want us to continue to believe that so that they can keep making money of these innocent animals and so you need to really stop looking at that kind of information that is biased and go do your own independent research once you are convinced that veganism is the right thing to do you'll find a way so you'll figure out how to do it the most important thing is to decide that you don't want to be a part of this injustice anymore and then you will figure out how to do it so you'll do your research you'll try different things Sure, it may be possible that your body doesn't absorb a certain kind of iron or B12. There is an unlimited number of different kinds of supplements that you could try. They come in different forms, etc. So you could try that. And also the fact that not every single vegan needs to be on a supplement. So it really comes down to how you're eating and your diet. Many vegans go vegan and for years they don't take any supplements or be, even b12 which is the most common so it really comes down to your diet how you eat and how you look after yourself you may not even need those supplements and you may be getting it from your, the food that you're eating so you can say all of those things to them so when it comes to any nutrition related question this is basically the information that you need to say you started by talking about the animals you give them the information in the middle and then you end it by bringing it back to the animal. So it's like a sandwich. So you start by the animals, you ask them the question first, where do you think the animals are getting these vitamins from? You give them the information and then you bring it back to the animals and the fact that if you want to be vegan, you'll find a way. And that's it. Okay, let's use this one. When people say, but I like meat. So if you're outreaching someone and they say, I don't like what I'm seeing, I don't like that the animals are being treated this way, but I like meat, I love meat, I love cheese, I, can't, I could never give up cheese. How many times have we heard that? So how do you deal with that? How do you respond to that one? The first thing is asking the question, just because you take pleasure from something, does that justify it? Does that make it okay? five ten minutes of palate pleasure does that justify an animal being tortured raped and murdered putting yourself in the victim's position again asking them would you be willing to be put in the same position just because somebody took pleasure from raping you torturing you and taking your life i know that some of you said there are plenty of vegan options now alternatives all of that that is something that should be mentioned later on again because one you need to be convinced why you should be vegan and two you will figure out how to be vegan so and the how is not really something we focus on with AV like when we do the Q is really the why that we like to focus on and the how is something that we give them the information to take home they can check out the website we give them the card everyone has a phone in their pocket these days so they can look it up if somebody really wants to do something they'll find a way 
so they'll find that information but yeah there's nothing wrong with mentioning that there are products that don't involve rape and torture there's vegan cheese vegan burgers all of that you can mention that but don't let that be the center of the conversation so bring it up at the end towards the end but yeah basically that's the only thing you need to point out the fact that these animals are being tortured and they are being murdered just because that person or other individuals like that person prefer the taste of a particular kind of cheese or they enjoy eating a bacon sandwich for five minutes and that's just someone's life entire life for a sandwich or for a piece of cake or for some cheese and that's the only thing you need to point out and let them think about that this is an injustice to the animals would you say that about any other injustice exactly ask them if you were looking at a different injustice would you then be hesitant to take that step because you took pleasure from that injustice whatever that could be so if someone likes sex that justifies them raping it's the same personal pleasure does not justify abusing torturing and murder exactly there are plenty of people that like the idea of raping someone or torturing someone does that mean that they should go ahead and do it just because that person likes it or like you said people like having sex does that mean that they should just go and rape someone just because they are the one taking pleasure from it and the other person the victim doesn't matter they don't have a say in this so we focus on the why and we try to convince that person rather help that person to come to their own conclusion because really you can't convince anyone who's not ready okay someone said if i go vegan will that change something i mean people will continue eating meat again this goes back to supply and demand the way it works is the more demand there is the more they need to supply that particular product so the more people buy animal products the more that supermarket or that restaurant those companies will continue to produce those products you might think that I'm just one individual, but that's exactly how you create change in the world. When it comes to every other injustice or every other issue, that's the, the mindset that people have. Every single person counts. You have the power to change the world simply by making different choices. So every time you go and buy a product at the supermarket, if you pick a vegan product instead of an animal product, you're creating demand for that and then more people are doing the same thing and that's exactly how you lower the demand for these products so yes it does matter and you should go vegan what would you recommend to someone who wants to become an animal rights activist just do activism in whatever form that you feel comfortable if you have just decided that you want to be an activist or you've recently gone vegan try to figure out what kind of activism suits you best if you want to participate at the cube you can check out our website, cubeoftruth.com. You can see if there are chapters around you and you can simply attend when you can. You can stand in the cube, you can do outreach. If there are no cubes and you want to start your own chapter, you can send us an email to join at anonymousforthevoiceless.org. You can set up your own chapter and do the cube. If you want to do activism online, I recommend that you just create videos, posts, engage in conversations about veganism in the comment section when there are non-vegans using these arguments against veganism you can go in and you can respond to them basically practicing your outreach and i think that's the best way to be active just outreaching and educating people all right thank you so much for everyone who joined me today take care everyone thanks for joining much love